equity strategist Linda Dissel. She helps oversee $390 billion of federated investors. And when she was last here on Street Smart, she told us she expects the S&P 500 to reach 1350 or higher this year. So, Linda, let's start with you. But I'm going to start focusing on the oil industry because that's been a focus for us today here. Uh, the president making comments about the oil industry. Is that the next industry that's going to see a lot of regulation? We've seen it, you know, we're expecting it in the financials. Um, is the energy industry the next one, though? Well, it's definitely, as you say, in the headlines now. And I think it's too early to say that that's the case. It's a um, it, it's just something that should be expected right now as we're trying to cap off the oil spill. I think that we're in, now that we're getting into the summer months, this type of news is something that could, uh, that could get us too worried when we may be wanting to focus on some other fundamentals. I feel like the financial reform bill making its way through is, through is probably more important for the markets. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, Linda, how much does this really matter to the to the markets? I mean, clearly it's very important. Obviously, uh, it could be very costly to the tourism uh, industries and really to the entire ecosystem, obviously, down south. But how much does it matter to the markets on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, really, it's very, very difficult to see that it matters too much. And I have to say to you, you know, that I travel really all the time. And as I travel, I, I really can, can sense that most people don't know how this oil spill is going to affect them. Maybe they'll speak about the beaches or maybe they'll speak about the cost of shrimp and the like, but uh, they really think this is more of a, of a side issue. And when people talk to me about what they worry about for the markets, there are lots of other things going on that seem to be um, more worrisome to them now. Linda, Tim points out that the setup isn't so great for growth. I mean, we're looking at increased regulation around the world, increased taxes, especially for the wealthy. I mean, what makes you optimistic? I think, and I agree with Tim in a lot of what he says, but I think it's more of a timing question. For sure, the growth that we're seeing so far in terms of the great profit numbers has been related to business. It's a business-led recovery and not a consumer-led recovery. That's true. And what is missing, and the most worrisome thing for me being a bullish person for this year, is the small businessman. And will he come in, will he get involved, and will he participate in the marketplace um, in terms of hiring people, his views towards taxes and regulation? or what's holding him back. But we have the feeling that the profits will be such that he will see that he needs to hire people to rebuild inventories and to, uh, to, to do more in terms of capital expenditures, which have been very, very much starved in the past. So, that, so that's where our bullishness comes from now until the future, whenever the tax man does come around. That could slow things down, I would agree. Uh, Linda, it's Julie here. When you talk about hiring, though, and you talk about timing, I mean, most estimates are still for a pretty lofty unemployment rate by the end of the year. So when do you see this hiring mostly coming, and when do you see it uh, really starting to fuel the economic recovery in a way where government stimulus is not needed? Yes, well, uh that the handoff is what's going to be most interesting, and it has to do with our, our ability to spend and our willingness to spend. And I think that the unemployment rate will remain high really for some years to come. We won't see the 5% type unemployment rate for uh, who knows how long. But the important point is that the unemployment rate at the higher end is much lower than what it is at the lower end of the households in our economy. And so to the extent the higher end gets more work or continues to believe they will not be laid off, they may be willing to spend more. As far as the employment, and of course we'll find out again next week, last payroll number, which was really quite good and overshadowed by the, uh, the, the big decline the previous day, was good, it was broad, and it was quick coming out of the low end. To be up over 200,000 four months after the trough is really quite good. And if history is any guide, you could potentially just surprise on the upside in hiring in the next, next number of months. Hey, Tim. More hiring. Uh, Linda, let me get your take on that. I mean, are, are you still as optimistic optimistic as you were the last time you were on with us you were looking for a v-shaped recovery it's all good do you still do you still have that kind of optimism we still do have good optimism um, uh, we think the back half of the year could slow down in terms of its growth rate but the earnings estimates for next year if they hold steady in a low inflationary environment could still justify our 1350 by year end uh, that's what we would be suggesting. And that doesn't mean that we can disagree with those who would worry about how we're going to pay for all this in the taxes. We just think that's further off into the future. And with the future that we see, we should take advantage and make money while the market is going up. Do you think corporate earnings are going to continue to climb to uh, the heights that people expect? I mean, uh, $100, does that sound reasonable for you, uh, 2011? 
Right. Well, right now, I think at the beginning of the year, uh, Thomson Reuters started out at $94. I think right now it's about $97. And of course, they've had to raise their estimates for the better part of a year every single, you know, almost every single week. And it was the most unusual first quarter where they raised all the way through the quarter and still at the end of the quarter, they surprised by better than they have surprised since they came out with the series at the beginning of 87. That's pretty strong. Again, companies have their, their costs under control. Okay. They have exports that are good. And so, yes, we think it could come out.